and uh and that is all the problem like to like you say like there's some friends of yours that came back to to live with her parents and from mm -hmm. a uh expat ex ex uh, point of view i don't mm -hmm. have parents to go back to my house yeah. to, to live to so yeah. i have to rely either on extortion mm -hmm. rents that is in dublin that's what i'm doing yeah. right now and i'm seeking out to mm -hmm. a house or oh, i have to go back to my country or i have to go to another country that actually mm -hmm. Uh, offers a good job, good salary. It's not, it's not just Ireland. So like you have Germany, you have Netherlands, you have US, yeah. and uh, that's a huge problem. But uh... the following is the conversation between me and Owen Murray. Owen is the owner of viewhire.ie, a consultancy platform to help prepare candidates for the next job interview. This is Ways of Working podcast. Check out our partners in the description. So thank you, thank you for having me. Uh, so, um, can you talk a little bit about you today, Owen? <laughs> yeah, and and thank you, Lucas, for having me on the podcast. Really appreciate it, and uh, it was great to to meet you a couple of weeks at at the networking event we were at. Um, so yeah, so I, I'm coming to you from uh, my log house cabin down the bottom of my garden. Um, so <laughs> it doubles as my uh, my man cave during the weekend. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm Owen Murray. Um, I'm the founder of uh, consultancy firm YourHire.ie, um, and I live in Shankill uh, in Dublin um, with my two daughters, uh, two and four, and uh, my wife as well. Um, and over uh, 13 years, uh, I've worked in the recruitment field. Um, so I've worked both agency and in-house at all different levels. Um, and I've worked with some of the top consultancy firms and um, tech firms as well. Um, and I've led their interview processes. Um, and I've, I've realized that I can support a job seeker no matter what level um, to secure their dream job. Uh, but I've also realized that uh, companies want to learn how to execute an outstanding interview process uh, in order for them to secure the right candidate, um, especially in this competitive market. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I'm, I'm heading up your heart today. Um, so uh, it's, it essentially provides uh, job interview preparation uh, for anyone looking for a role um, and business to business interviewer preparation as well. Um, and your heart today provides a, a more uh, advanced, I suppose, tailored solution uh, to mm -hmm. finding the right job, right? Um, and securing the right candidate. Um, so I work with anyone who's looking for a new job, whether it be someone in, has been laid off uh, in the tech sector. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. I was one of those uh, last year. So I have oh, a lot of man. empathy for, for uh, people like that. Um, it's not a nice place to be. Um, uh, anyone who um, is maybe returning from maternity leave um, and hasn't done an interview in a long time and needs support. Um, you know, and how to carry themselves in an interview. Um, uh, anyone in a job who wants to get out of a job. So I think uh, I think we've all been there, Lucas, um, at some yeah. point. <laughs> um, and also um, graduates and interns. So someone mm. who has never even done a job interview before um, and needs literally uh, guidance um, from everything. Um, you know, from it, interview etiquette to uh, what to say, what not to say, to your LinkedIn profile, to your CV review. Um, and I also work with uh, companies to advise their interview process as well. Um, All right, so interesting. I work with um, recruitment agencies to support job seekers in their pipeline, so they may have mm -hmm. candidates uh, that are sort of at the uh, final round of interview and they need job interview preparation to secure the role. I see. What you mean. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, a bit about me and uh, your heart. <laughs> All right. And uh, interesting that you mentioned that you were laid off last year. And uh, mm. that's that's uh, that's something that actually impact a lot of people. And uh, yeah, so that would be like the, the I think the next topic we could uh, go for. So right. what do you think like it is the the key factor that today they are affecting the job market and uh, like how can job seekers as well? Uh, extending the key factors of how they can job seekers to be formed about this changing and they can uh, how they can like uh, what type of resources they can go for to to mm -hmm. understand this key these changes you know absolutely and it's a really good question lucas so um you know i think the housing crisis uh has having a huge effect on yeah, the job market right um and it's driving 
sort of labor shortages um, and skill shortages um, mm -hmm. and talent retention uh, is an issue for a lot of businesses at the moment, right? Um, mm -hmm. As well as uh, probably Dublin specific, but Ireland as well. Um, you know, we've, we've poor transport infrastructure as well. And that doesn't help the situation. Um, and I meet clients um, and I've met clients over the last sort of couple of weeks and months uh, who need uh, roles in order to stay in the country. So um, I, I met someone last week who was in the tech sector and um, unfortunately got um, laid off. Uh, that person had been um, relocated from the US, um, you know, was headhunted by this particular business and seven months into the role now had moved their family across to Ireland. Um, and now if they don't get a role, uh, their visa will be affected and essentially they'll have to move back to their home country. So um, I think it's having a huge effect on um, not just, you know, uh, jobs, but actually personal lives and families that are attached to these people. Um, you know, so it's having a massive impact on that. Um, I think also uh, during the pandemic, uh, some of the companies, you know, told employees that they could work 100% from home. Um, mm. And based on that, you know, people bought houses outside of the city, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> where um, where the business was situated in. Um, and now they're being told to, to come back into the office maybe two or three times a week, um, which is not realistic if uh, you're living out in sort of, uh, you bought a house down in Kilkenny and you were, you, you bought that house in the pretense that uh, you were going to work 100% from home, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think companies need to uh, be a bit more flexible in, and that they uh, should uh, be open to the hybrid and um, the remote option, um, depending on what the what works best for the candidate, right? Um, and yeah, I, I met someone who, um, I was actually down in uh, the tennis club the other day, and uh, I met someone who had, ju had done just that, who had relocated to mm. uh, Kilkenny based on the fact that they were told that the role was 100%. Uh, remote from the uh, during the pandemic and now is being told to come back into the office three days a week um so you yeah. know community any three days a week isn't realistic um so that person is is a good example of you know a company is going to find it hard to retain that uh person um with a you know great skill set because uh, they have bought a house down in Kilkenny and they've huge commitments uh to their mortgage down there and they're not going to relocate to Dublin because um, house prices are astronomically high. So, um, yeah, the, the housing crisis in general, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of these sort of examples coming out of the woodwork now. And I think, I think the solution, Lucas, is uh, really to expand uh, social and cost rental housing, right? Um, mm. you know, we, can, we can move people out of the private rental sector and into the housing, uh, mm. into housing that, you know, is affordable, right? Um, mm. And I think that creates then a more stable and better value for money uh, accommodation wise. Um, I, I've talked to clients over the last couple of weeks and months also that have had to move back in with their parents because they can't afford the rent uh, that they're paying. So, you know, that, that is not something most people want to do, um, but they literally have no choice. And, they're in well enough paid jobs, but they can't uh, pay the rent that is being asked, um, you know, um, for these, for, for their accommodation. Um, I also, I was actually reading the Irish, uh, an article in Irish Jobs this morning, and they were saying that although fully remote roles are in decline, uh, flexibility and work-life balance are still t top of, of a job seeker's agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, I think this is really important uh, if you, you know, if you want um, a work-life balance um, and, you know, I've done training sessions on it in my previous companies about uh, how important a work-life balance is. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't have it, you can, uh, you can appro approach burnout, uh, which I've seen happen uh, employees in the companies I worked at, um, which is not a nice thing to see. Um, and work-life balance is really important. Um, so um, I think to, to stay competitive, uh, the companies, you know, they need to cater for candidates who are looking for both that hybrid and, and fully remote options. And if they're not, um, you know, they need to make it clear in the interview process that this role is three days from home, 
uh, two days in the office, vice versa, or it, it, is it five days a week in the office? Because what can happen is if you uh, change uh, what you've uh, told them in the interview process, um, uh, you know, six months into the job, the, the candidate may want to leave because that's not what was sold to them in the interview mm. process. So um, I think there's a lot there. Um, but yeah, the, the housing crisis will be a, a huge one at the moment um, and something hopefully the government can get on top of. But uh, it's not going to be an easy one. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel like the that's the thing. One of the things that I saw that happened during the pandemic is this thing about uh, you are allowed to work from home. And then I have a lot of friends that they are like Brazilians and they work like from um, to other cities now and they move from other other counties in Ireland. And the key problem that I saw was a lot of them, the companies start to say, oh, you need to go back to work. But then that was sold to them that it was easy to move to the countryside and then they, they'd be easily going to be able to come back. And uh, that that's really weird because you compromise your employee to buy a house that's very expensive, you know, and they, they have to be like 30 years paying that mortgage. And now you're saying to them, do you have to come back once once a week at least? It's, it's kind of like impractical in some sort of points. And at least on the tech market, is actually gonna make them to go to other companies and uh and there is other problem like to like you say like there's some friends of yours that came back to to live with their parents and from mm -hmm. a uh from a uh expat ex ex uh, point of view i don't mm -hmm. have parents to go back to my house yeah. to, to live to so mm -hmm. i have to rely either on extortion mm -hmm. rents that is in dublin that's what i'm doing yeah. right now and i'm seeking out to mm -hmm. a house or I have to go back to, to, to uh, or I have to go back to my country, or I have to go to another country that actually uh, offers a good job, good salary. It's not, it's not just Ireland. So like you have Germany, you have Netherlands, you have US, yeah. and uh, that's a huge problem. But um, one of the things, uh, yeah, so one of the things I wanted to explore as well is like, what would be, what would be like the, the main, resources you think uh, a uh, candidate when they look in for example they just moved to the countryside and now they have to work remotely so do you believe like the main source will be like through the job career of the company it will be linkedin will be news if, or like a consultant like yourself what what do you think would be like the key resources for them to understand uh, what they are now and how they can position on the job market Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, if they are looking, um, for a new role and it's a remote option, they should, you know, when they see a, a job spec, um, on LinkedIn or wherever it is to really stand back and ask, ask themselves a question, right. Um, if, if, if it is a remote role, then to go for it, but if it is a hybrid option and that's not realistic to not go for mm -hmm. it, um, because, uh, what can happen is, when you are seeking a role um, and you're not seeing that many remote options, for example, and that's what you're looking for, you tend to start getting a little trigger happy with applying for roles that are maybe hybrid, um, but that's not what you're looking for, right? You're looking for a remote position. So really ask yourself that question. Um, I think, you know, I think working on your brand, Lucas, is really important, right? So hmm. um, what I mean by that is uh, your CV and your LinkedIn profile. Okay. So, right. um, and really think of your CV and, and your LinkedIn as, as your sales tool. Mm. Um, so to, to get you in front of an employer. Okay. So I, like for my time at, at LinkedIn, especially, uh, I really understand the power of the platform. And um, so mm -hmm. if you are seeking a role uh, to be as visible as possible on, on the platform, whether you're posting content about something you're interested in, um, you know, you're updating uh, people on your job search, if you're immediately available, um, you know, you'd be surprised uh, when you put up content uh, that uh, is valuable, uh, that other people will read it. And it can be just, you know, that like or that share that can link you to someone in a company that uh, are hiring um, and the, the role is perfect for you. Um, job interview preparation is really important. So I think in today's job market, um, you know, there seems to be a trend of more competition now um and in some sectors um so um you know candidates are going above and beyond now to uh, make sure that 
uh, they can beat the competition. Um, so, um, you know, they are uh, making sure their LinkedIn profile, um, you know, has all the bells and whistles on it and looks, um, you know, uh, good for any recruiter to, to go on to it and uh, is eye catching so that the recruiter will reach out to them and they can start an interview process. Um, and, um, you know, the, the goal, I suppose, is, is to secure a job that you want. OK, so, um, you know, if you're interviewing for um, a role um, and, you know, you get to the offer stage, but you there's a few red flags along the way. Um, really ask yourself, are you should you take that role just because you have one offer on the table? Um, and I understand as well that you know, um, candidates need to get back to work and they need to earn money. But what can happen is if you take a role that, uh, you know, you don't uh, really want and you saw a few red flags along the way, um, in six months to a year's time, you know, you'll end up uh, not liking that role and having to move again, which is not good for your career. You start to look jumpy on your CV as well. Um, so just make, you know, take a breath when you have a job offer um, take your time um, and uh, don't make any hasty decisions, I would say. Always mm-hmm. kind of write out a, a pros and cons list. That always helps yeah. me. <laughs> they can see something in front of me um, and then make the decision after that. Um, I guess, you know, a lot of, uh, well, I've seen it happen in the past where candidates have accepted, um, you know, roles that they didn't really want and then they're back out in the job market again, which is no fun mm. for any the company or them themselves. Uh, so yeah, that would be my, my top advice, just uh, ask yourself why you're interested in this role and, mm. you know, what, what you will get out of it and what you can, if you can add value to the role as well. All right. Yeah, that's interesting. And uh, um, so what, so let's, well, we talk more, a lot about the country side, like what mm-hmm. they have to do to look to seek a new job. And, uh, but you said that you work with companies as well. And uh, one yeah. of the things that uh, I'm interested to see to talk to is about like what is uh, the best way for a company nowadays to attract the best talent. talent sorry, uh, so like what does the company needs to do mm-hmm. and uh, to attract them, and uh, what 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 the company should do to differentiate themselves from the competitors. Because if you know like a big tech or, or like a huge company, you don't mm-hmm. have actually a name for yourself so like how do you what do you do to attract those talent talents absolutely um and it, it, it's another great question lucas so you know first and foremost uh a business needs to to run an efficient recruitment process right so um what i mean by that is create a, a really good candidate experience um and you know i'm a firm believer in um if if a candidate has uh, two offers at the end of an interview process um they will choose the company that has given them the better candidate experience okay so things like um you know making sure that the interview panel have synced before the interview process kicks mm-hmm. off and what i mean by that is you know that they, they're not answer, asking the same questions of the candidate because the candidate mm-hmm. Uh, can, it can create a bad candidate experience if you keep asking the same question over yes. and over to the same candidate. Um, mm-hmm. And the candidates are taking no, note of this, right, as well. So um, this all affects the sort of end of the process of whether they uh, will accept the role or not. Um, I think the length of the process is really important, Lucas. So, mm. um, you know, I've talked to can- candidates and, and clients um, that have been sort of you know, seven, eight stages in an interview process, right? <laughs> um, which, you know, um, I understand sometimes they need, in a company, they need to meet a certain amount of people, uh, peers and uh, the leadership team and the HR team, etc. cetera. Uh, but what can happen is when a candidate isn't in a process like that, they can get down to the sixth, seventh, eighth interview and they can be the perfect candidate for the role, mm. but their motivation can go because they're, uh, you know, they maybe don't understand the structure of the, and the length of the process. It wasn't described to them in the right way at the beginning of the process. Um, and that can uh, come across in an interview, uh, body language and, uh, you know, the tone of voice, um, mm. can, um, you know, uh, you know, can come across and then they, they can make a decision on that candidate that they're not going to hire them because maybe their motivation mm-hmm. is down. Um, but it's actually because the, the length of the process is so long. Um, mm-hmm. Feedback is really important as well. So, you know, um, when a, a candidate interviews, um, I would say within sort of 
a 48 hours that that candidate should receive feedback if it's positive or uh, negative. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think companies need to think about candidates who uh, were good in interview, but uh, they're not going to progress with them. But mm -hmm. maybe we'll re-engage with that candidate in six months, a year's time uh, when they have more experience. Um, and, um, you know, that candidate will interview with that company based on their candidate experience uh, six months or a year before. Okay. Um, I think having a lot of touch points as well, uh, as many touch points with the candidate as possible. So keeping up communication, keeping them in the loop all the time, um, no matter where it be email or uh, a phone call, um, uh, just to make sure that they uh, know what's going on. If there's, there's a delay in feedback, why is there a delay in feedback? Uh, because um, if you don't get back to candidates in a timely manner, you can lose candidates at the end of the uh, pipeline um, when they start getting offers from other uh, companies who have uh, a shorter um, interview uh, timeline. Um, so I'd mm -hmm. say they're the main uh, things that I think a, a company should be doing. Um, and, you know, to, to, to kind of um, beat their competitors. Um, mm. um, so, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. And uh, one of the things uh, is, um, I believe you're going to face in the future is to hire people as you, you have in your business now when you start to do, uh, you're very, you, you say that you're early on the market right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, so what, so you say that what makes you start your own business is because you, you got into the layoff as well last year. And then, yeah. uh, you saw like you can gather your expertise and do, and do this kind of consultancy. But I believe as you grow successfully, you're going to be need to, to hire new people and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to work with you. So what mm -hmm. do you think would be your like biggest challenge or what was your biggest challenge when you start your own business and, uh, what advice, for example, you give someone that's mm -hmm. thinking of starting their own business in a, in the, in this green job market, that's kind of like, mm -hmm. uh, in the uncharted waters at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose my biggest challenge at the start was uh, where do I start, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I I was advised to to call the uh, local enterprise office. Uh, mine is in Rattown and Dunleary. Um, and, you know, they have been amazing. And the support that they've given me uh, throughout starting my own business has been um, just uh, second to none. I, I, mm. um, I can't talk about them highly enough. Um, so uh, they they assigned a mentor to me uh, for free. So I check in with that person once every maybe three months uh, to give them an update on the business and they give me advice on what I should or shouldn't be doing. Uh, they did things like organizing networking events. Um, I did a start your own business course uh, with with the local enterprise board, um, which wasn't expensive at all, um, and I ran that alongside the opening of my business. Um, oh. I feel like I'm out of my comfort zone as well, Lucas, which I really <laughs> like. Um, That's good. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And like, uh, I would say to network with uh, like-minded people. Uh, mm, that's been yeah. really impactful for me. I think, um, you know, we're talking now, Lucas, because we met at a networking event exactly. um, <laughs> uh, as our companies are collaborating as well, um, which is fantastic. And, um, you know, I think you do, do need to surround yourself with, with similar minded entrepreneurs uh, because they're in the same boat and they have the same issues and challenges you have. Um, I'd say like most people are, are positive about what you're doing, um, mm. you know, uh, but you can get, uh, and I've seen these uh, over the last couple of months, uh, what I like to call, um, would you not get a real job type people? So that's what they <laughs> kind of say to you. And you can see that through body language sometimes. It's true. In which case, just smile and nod, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, type of people. But um, you know, the, the most important part of um, any business, um, and I'm realizing this, is the customer, right? So... Um, you know, if you, it was said to me in the start your own business course, if you uh, don't have a paying customer, you don't have a business, right? So, sure. um, what I, I suppose what I've learned from the process, and I don't, don't know about you, Lucas, but 
um, you know, you can get you can get caught up in uh, the, all the fancy stuff, right? So yeah, a LinkedIn <laughs> post, designing the website. I was mm. uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I was beside myself uh, putting the website together, and I ended up actually outsourcing it to someone else uh, because it was taking up too much time. Um, yeah. And that person was brilliant and uh, w- w- was able to and had the experience to set up a website. Um, and, um, you know, I think the sales piece and understanding your customer is, is where 80% of your, your time should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if you can understand your customer and solve their issue, um, then your business will be successful. And, um, you know, I'm reading books and books about all, all these things on how to uh, build a successful business. And it's, it's all about the customer right? and understanding them, no matter what kind of business you have, a product or service. Uh, if yeah. you can crack that, uh, your your uh, your business will be successful. Yeah, it's de- it definitely, definitely. <laughs> okay, so uh, as we get into the conclusion of this uh, of this conversation that we have, I al- I always try to uh, how can I say finish this uh, mm-hmm. this conversation always with, with a uh, philosopher because I love philosophers and I like to okay. quote them and. Uh, and I wanted like to actually get insights from other people. So I was reading recently about Confucius, and then I mm-hmm. don't know if it's spelling this way. But they, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but then uh, he have a um, a quote that is uh, it say as follow. I, I don't want it to butcher him, but is uh, choose a job you love, and you never have to work a day in your life, right? So based on your experience building your business as a job consultant, so mm-hmm. what, uh, how important do you think is, uh, is for you to do the job you do, you know, the mm-hmm. work that you do, and uh, mm-hmm. how important do you think is for job seekers to find a work they align with their passions and values? Absolutely. Like, I think the word is passion, um, Lucas. So, uh, you know, if you're not passionate about what you're doing uh, and your business, um, you know, that will come across and it will be picked up. Um, you know, work on your sales pitch, I would say, uh, be passionate about what you're doing. Um, and, you know, that will come across, um, you know. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the word would be passion there, I suppose. Uh, but I really like that quote as well. Uh, and I, I think it's kind of, it brings me back to what I said earlier about, you know, when you are looking for a job, uh, make sure that it's something you love and it'll uh, progress your career if that's what, what uh, you want to do. Um, because if you don't love it, you will end up leaving it um, sooner rather than later. So, yeah, uh, make sure you, you, when you say yes to the role that, you know, you, you, you love the role and you, and you want it. Exactly. All right. Perfect. Okay. That's it, Owen. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's the conversation for today. <laughs> Thanks, Lucas. I really appreciate yes. it. Thanks for having me on again. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>